In this video, we're going to control a parameter within our Ableton Live set from a Max for Live device using the Push 3 standalone. Now, normally this would be really quite easy because within the Live software, you would click on your mouse with your map in, you go and click on another parameter, and you can see a little square box around it, and Live would automatically report the ID of that control which you could then use to bring the mapping control dial into effect and perhaps build your own control surface or use a Max for Live generated signal like an LFO to control the map parameter. That's not unfortunately going to work for the standalone though because there's no mouse and the standalone doesn't report that you've actually selected a parameter easily. So I'm gonna use our push three control master device, and as you can see, automatically grab the grid as we knew it would. I'm gonna turn the map control, the button to map, and then I'm going to go to this grainy day device, a lovely little granulator from our friends at Aval. And if I move the control there for dry wet, and you can see it's labeled DW within the device, and I return to my push three control master, you can see that it's mapped. And if I select the device to see the banks of parameters, you'll see that the bank name has changed to DW. So it'll actually report back the control that we are looking at. Now, if I turn the map control, as you can see, it's affecting the dry wet there on the grainy day device. Now I'm going to turn off the map dial, which deletes the mapping. But as I do that, it's going to dynamically update the bank names. And what you'll notice is that the current behavior of the live.banks object is that when you do change the names of the bank, it will automatically select and display the final bank that's available on the push screen. So it's turned its name back to controls. But if I just repeat that, I'll go to map. I'll go to maybe uh, oh, the tape device. Let's go for the playback speed this time. Go back to push three control. We're now controlling the playback speed and I can slow that right down to 15 and then turn it up to the 30. Okay, let's dive into the device. Excellent, so we've got a bit of code down here, so you know when to find it when we uh, put this out at the end of these videos. Basically, I'm just using my map button here, and that's got a short name and a long name, so I've added it to my live.banks object. When it's a zero, it's gonna pass the zero through. That zero is gonna get added to the ID, effectively turning off this live object, so you won't be able to send any messages through to it. It's also going to send the word map back to the text on so that it changes the display, display state of this button. But as covered in our previous video, unfortunately, whilst I can update what's displayed in the device view in both the Max for Live device and Ableton Live, it's not going to reflect on the Push 3 standalone screen. Then changing the map button to on will send a one message and will actually engage this who changed patch, which its pure intent is to put out the ID of whatever parameter was adjusted last with the standalone. We'll dive into that in a second, but let's quickly look at the end of the story. From the who to change patch, the ID is going to be sent into a live object. I'm then going to trigger a request to get the minimum, maximum, and the name. I wrote the min and max values into a scale object, and this is receiving a message of 0 to 127 from the live dial, and setting the output value with the scale object to control our chosen parameter. I'll also send out the name, which is going to edit the first bank, which is bank 0, with that name and send it through to our live.banks object. The really clever stuff is in the Who Change patch, and this was pulled together by Isotonic Collective member Elizabeth Homeland, and he's currently working on a raft of new devices specifically for the Push uh, 3 standalone that I'll share the links for in the description below. Basically, when this device is sent the one from turning on the map button, it's going to basically open when I'm in control of this device. If I release these controls manually uh, and bring the grid uh, button, button matrix back, then I won't be able to do any mani mapping. But effectively, what's going to happen is it's going to form some paths and it's going to make sure 
safety first, if you remember from the last video, that when the selected device is reported that this is not the device itself. I mean, the worst thing you can do, especially when you're in standalone, is try and map a device to itself because effectively you just get yourself in a loop there and that isn't very good. What it's doing is then taking the ID of the selected device and getting all the parameters for the destination of live path, live set, the selected track, the selected device. Basically, whichever has been selected, which if I go back and I select the grainy day device, it's then going to go and get the ID of all of the parameters. It then stores all of these parameter IDs into one of these col, col objects, and then it uses each parameter ID and stores each parameter's current value in another col. So basically, whichever device you select, it looks up all the parameters, grabs their current values, and basically the value pre-grabbing is set in here. And then we observe those same parameters. And if one of those values has changed, and this works very rapidly, then it will put that together, grab it, output it, check that it was us that moved it, not because it's being controlled by an LFO or another maximum live device. And you know, when you're looking live and a device has a, a parameter or an instrument has a parameter that's grayed out, in which case we're going to ignore those because they're constantly being updated and controlled. And then when we found the right parameter ID, we stop observing, delay, send all the messages through and grab the ID out of the bottom. So in summary, very clever, very simple. You're checking what device is in focus. You're grabbing all of its parameters and storing the current values. You're then observing all those, those values and then one, one of them changes, it quickly goes and checks it against the original stored value. Make sure that it's not being controlled by another max for live device and then puts out the ID, which allows us to basically control anything we like from the push three standalone and not with a mouse in sight. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, remember to subscribe and we'll continue this range of videos as and when we find new stuff to play with. Cheers.